Hello students, uh, myself Mrutunjay um, SME, Faculty, Department of MCA, KLS Gokta Institute of Technology, Belagavi. Welcome you to this PGCT Awareness Program. So today I will be uh, covering about the data representation and the binary arithmetic under computer awareness section of your PGCT question paper. So let us start with uh, data representation. So in this uh, entire data representation and uh, the binary arithmetic, you will be getting almost say uh, six to eight one mark questions and almost one to two two marks questions. So totally it is making up of uh, eight to 12 marks, uh, 12 marks in the, in the, in the PGCT question paper. So let us start with uh, data representation. So now in this particular case, why we want the data representation? Data representation. So why it is required? So in, in this particular case, you already know that computer is going to process the data so before processing, it has to store the data in a computer memory. So in order to understand the processing part, first we need to understand how the data is stored. So for this particular sake, the data representation comes into picture. So with respect to data representation, the meaning is that there are two viewpoints here. One is internal representation one more is external representation internal representation means how the data is stored into the hardware of the memory or hardware of your computer so this is what the internal representation external representation means how the computer is going to display the output or the data to the external world means to the users so this is means the external representation so the conversion from the external representation to internal representation and back from internal representation to external representation this process is known as a data representation so in this case as i have told that the external representation. So consider I am writing a program using any uh, general purpose language. Say I want to write a program to sort uh, the given name of students. Okay. So in this particular case, what is my input? The input is the student names. So I will take the input, the student names. So in this case, Student names are the inputs taken from your keyboard or from any other input device and which will be stored into a memory. And then the processing part is what in this particular program? Sorting. Okay, sorting according to the alphabetical order and then print that particular alphabetical order or sorted order onto the output display device or to the printer. This is the process here. So, in this case, giving an input to a program is external to an internal representation. And internal representation, in this, this, uh, what you can say, the internal representation to external representation is processing that particular, those particular names and then presenting the output to the external world is called as an internal to external representation. So in this entire process, okay, in what form the computer is going to understand the data? Okay, so as an external world, we as a user, we understand 
the numerals and characters okay numerals are nothing but the decimal number system we understand and the characters okay alphabetical characters from the english statement or english language you can say then but your computer doesn't understand this decimal number system or what you can say the uh, characters so now for computer hardware whatever the data is been represented it is represented in the form of a binary only so this and this clearly tells that your computer hardware will understand only two types of symbols that is zero and one okay so this is our binary input or binary symbols you can say so whatever the data that we want to convey it to a computer it is in the form of zeros and ones only okay so this is your internal representation but to the external representation when it is to be presented to the user it should be decimal format or it is in a numeral format alphabetical format okay so this is why the data representation is a very plays a very important role in our computer hard so let us begin in this particular case with the, the data representation aspect so data representation includes various number systems various number systems so as a human being we understand the decimal number system so already you from your childhood okay from your school days onwards so far you have you are dealing with the decimal number system so what is decimal number system decimal number system you have 10 symbols to represent any number okay so already you know that so what are the symbols symbols are nothing but 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 0 to 9 symbols are used to represent our decimal number but your computer doesn't understand 0 to 9 so it is to be represented in the form of 0 and 1 only okay so because of this particular reason let us see how the conversion takes place from decimal to binary number system so similarly as i have defined what is decimal number system in the same manner we can define binary number system also that is nothing but our binary system is nothing but it consists of two symbols that is zero and one only and it is having a radix or base as a two this base is also called as radix radix or base two okay so our decimal system is having a radix 10 these are the nomenclatures that are used in the number system so by identifying the radix we can understand in what number system the data is represented okay so this is for our understanding okay so let us begin now how exactly the conversion takes place so let us take one example here so i have a one decimal number 41 which is represented in decimal format with radix 10 so now i need to convert it to the binary number okay so this is the conversion so i have a decimal number which is to be converted to a binary so in this particular process what do you do you write down the number given number as it is and just go on dividing this particular number by 2 okay so continue this particular division process until the quotient becomes zero and keep track of the remainders generated in this entire process okay so let us continue now so 
So in this case, the reminder generated is a 1. Reminder is 0. So finally, 0, 1. So now, this is our quotient becomes 0. This is, these are the reminders generated. Okay. So I have continued this division process by 2 till I reach 0. Okay. So quotient has become 0 now. So I have kept track of the reminders generated in this process. Okay. Then write down these reminders from bottom to top. Okay. So in this particular case, 1, 0, 1, double 0, 1. So, this is our equivalent binary number. So, given decimal number is 41 and its equivalent binary number is this one. Okay. So, in this case, this rightmost bit is called as a least significant bit LSB. And this Leftmost bit is called as a MSB, that is a most significant bit. Okay? So, in this particular case, this bottom number is your MSB and this is your LSB. So, in this fashion, you need to reorder the binary number. Okay? Right. So, let us do the reverse operation that is binary to decimal. Binary to decimal operation. Okay? So, the binary number will be given. You will be asked to generate the equivalent decimal number. So, let us consider the number, binary number as 1010. Zero, one zero. Point zero one one. So this is the given binary number. You are being asked to generate an equivalent decimal number. So when we are dealing with number system, already you know that there were two parts. One is integer part. Second one is the fractional part. So in this particular case, in the earlier example, I have taken only the integer part. So in this case, I have taken both this is our integer part, this is our fractional part, okay. So, this since we are dealing with the binary number, this is known as a binary point. In decimal number, this is called as a decimal point, okay, right. So, now in this case, just write down these particular number, okay. It means whatever the given number, you need to express in this case. So, express the given number as a polynomial of a Okay, so in this case, 0, let us write down the integer part first, 0 into 2 raised to 0, 0. Next number is 1 into 2 raised to 1 plus 0 into 2 raised to 2 plus 1 into 2 raised to 3. So, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, there are 4 digits. Start from 0 for the integer and it will end up in a 3 for a 4 digit. Okay. So, this becomes our integer part. So, for fractional part, same as 0, first number is 0 into 2 raised to minus 1. Okay. It is a fractional part. 
as with the same rules that are applied for the decimal also here for binary 1 into 2 raised to minus 2 and one more digit is 1 into 2 raised to minus 3 ok so express the given number as the sum of power of 2 so we have expressed the given binary number as sum of power of 2 then just simplify this polynomial that's it ok so let us see so 1 into 2 raised to 3 is 8 0 into anything is 0 so this is 2 0 into anything is 0 plus this is 0 only this is 1 by 2 sorry 1 by 4 and this is 1 by 8 ok so if you simplify this you will get 10.375 as the equivalent decimal number ok so we have seen both decimal to binary conversion and binary to decimal conversion ok with respect to binary number system and decimal number system is concerned ok so let us continue this particular process so now one more uh, what I can say the uh, number system I am going to discuss now that is octal number system okay so similar to decimal and binary number octal number system also is having two parts that is integer part and fractional part which are separated by an octal point and also in this particular case there are eight symbols which are exclusively used to represent any number in octal by number system okay this is this rule applies to all the number system okay so now which are the symbols that are available in octal number system to represent any number so here I have listed ok so 0 to 7 so these were the 8 symbols which are exclusively used to represent any octal number ok so only 8 symbols are available with respect to binary only 2 symbols are available that is 0 and 1 with respect to decimal number 8 symbols are available that is from 0 to 9 and octal number system we have 8 symbols are available 0 to 8 ok so let us see now how to convert the given decimal number to an octal number so consider a decimal number as 1 5, 3 and you have been asked to generate the equivalent octal code. So in this particular case the process is very much same that is a decimal to binary conversion how you have done the same rule is to be applied in this case also ok that is a, the division process. So write down the given decimal number and go on dividing it by 8 ok so you continue this division until you reach the quotient as 0 and keep track of the remainder generated ok so the same rule is to be applied only the divisor is 8 in this case instead of 2 so here it is 19 so Reminder generated is 1 and again 8 into 2 16 it is reminder generated is 3 so 8 0 this is 2 ok so this is your most significant bit you can say MSB this is our least significant bit ok means what the equivalent octal number is 2 first one is 2 
okay that is the, the left most side next number is 3 the last number is 1 so this is our lsb and this is our msb so 2 3 1 is an equivalent of 1 5 3 okay right so let us see the reverse operation of this octal to decimal So consider the octal number 630. Okay. So let us see why I am calling it as an octal number. Because see the number is framed or devised using the symbols of the octal number system. What are the symbols that are used in octal number system? Starting from 0 to 8. So see we have 0. Yes. We have 3. We have 6. So all these are the symbols of octal number system. So you have been asked to convert it to an equivalent decimal number system. Okay. So now again the same process in this case. You have to express the given octal number as a polynomial of 8. Means you have to express the given octal number as a power of 2. And then simplify it. Okay. So here 0 into 8 raised to minus uh, sorry 8 raised to 0 3 into 8 raised to 1 and 6 into 8 raised to 2 so you have expressed the given octal number as a power of 8 and then simplify it okay so if you simplify this particular arithmetic you will get answer as 4 not 8 Okay, so the same rule, whatever we have used for binary to decimal conversion, the same operation is been used in this particular case also, except that the radix is to be changed. So if it is binary, we have to use the radix or power of power as 2. In this particular case, since it is an octal number, we have to use the base as 8. Okay, so this is the point to be noted in this case. Right. With this, next I am going to introduce you one more uh, number system which we call it as hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal number system. So what is hexadecimal number system? Hexadecimal number system also consists of 16 symbols. That's why the name is hexadecimal. So here any number is represented using 16 symbols. Okay. So here starting from 0 to 9 and then A to F. So these were the 16 symbols exclusively used in hexadecimal number system to represent any number. Okay, that's why the name is a hexadecimal. So in binary, we have two symbols. In decimal, we have 10 symbols. And in octal number system, we have 8 symbols. And in hexadecimal, we have 16 symbols. Okay, 0 to 9 and capital A to capital F. Okay? Right. And also in this case, with the normal number system regulation, decimal number rules and regulations applies here also. Okay? So, it is having an integer part and fractional part also and these two parts are separated by hexadecimal point. Okay? Right. So, let us see the conversion process from decimal to an hexadecimal. Decimal to an Hexadecimal. decimal. 
So consider a number 41819 as a decimal number and you have been asked to convert it to an equivalent hex number. Okay. So again in this particular case the process remains same as with respect to decimal to binary and decimal to an octal. The same procedure you need to use only the change is that the radix. There in binary decimal to binary we have considered 2. Decimal to octal we have considered radix as 8. In the hex we need to consider radix as 60. Okay. So this is the point. So write down the given number decimal number and go on dividing it by radix 16. Okay. <coughs> and keep track of reminders generated in this process till the quotient becomes 0. Okay. So if you go on dividing it, you will find the reminder as 1 in first step. Second one. In second iteration, we have reminder 5 and in third iteration, we have reminder 3 and the last iteration, we have reminder 10. So now the quotient has become 0 in this particular case. Okay. So again, this is our MSB most significant bit and this is our LSB. So therefore our answer is so 10. Okay. So we are representing hexadecimal number system. Okay. In hexadecimal number system. So hexadecimal number system we don't have 10 and 11 there. Okay. So that's why I have written the symbols here. So what is in, de in decimal 10 in decimal 10 the equivalent hex code is A. Okay. So here only you can write down. So this is our capital A. And what is 11? So 11 equivalent 11 is our uh, sorry here in the decimal number 11 is B. So this is our B. So therefore most significant bit is capital A. Next digit is 3. 3 is available and 5 and the last one is that is 11 which is B. So this is an equivalent hex number. Okay. Okay. So let us do the reverse process of this. That is hex to decimal. So you will be given an hexadecimal number, you have been asked to convert it to a decimal number system. So let us consider the hex number as B65F. So this is our, the given hex number, you will be asked to convert it to an equivalent decimal number. So in this particular process, again the procedure remains <coughs> same thing, you have to express the given number, given hex number as a sum of power of 16. Okay. So, F F into 16 raised to 0. Next digit is 5 into 16 raised to 1. Next digit is 6 into 16 raised to 2. And next one is B into 16 raised to so I have expressed the given number as the sum of power of 16. Okay. Now simplify this. So before that I need to convert the symbols to an equivalent decimal number. So what is B? B equivalent decimal number is 11. So this is 11 into 16 raised to 3. 6 is as it is. 5 is as it is plus f is nothing but 
15 in decimal 15 into 16 raised to 0 so if you simplify this you will get the answer as 4 6 6 8 7 so this is the equivalent decimal number okay so so far binary number system octal number system hexadecimal number system and equivalently the decimal number system so we are well versed with these particular number systems so let us see few more conversions uh, with respect to these particular number system is concerned So let us consider the conversion from binary to octal, octal number. Okay. So you will be given a binary number. You will be asked to convert it to an equivalent octal number. So I will write the binary number first given binary number 1011100110101 so this is the given binary number and you have been asked to convert it to base 8 that is octal number digit okay so in this particular case, what you need to do is, this is our least significant bit and this is our most significant bit. Okay. So, now consider the given number and start or make the group of these particular binary bits. Okay, starting from LSB. So, you need to make a group of 3 binary bits. Starting from least significant bit. So, this is our least significant bit. So, start making the 3 bit group from least significant to least significant bit to most significant bit. Okay, so let us do this first. So, I am starting with least significant bit. So, this is my first group. This is my second group. This is my third group and uh, this is my fourth and remaining is the last one. Okay. So I will write down these groups separately here. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 1, 1, then finally 0, 1. Okay. So if you add any number of zeros at the left hand side, okay, it will not alter the meaning of the number okay so the rule is same for all the number system this rule we all also follow in decimal number system also okay right so in this case just now you have made the group of three bits just replace each of these three group units with equivalent octal number system octal symbol you can say okay so just see here this is our octal system so 0 to 7 so 0 1 1 okay so just look at the binary uh, what you can say the code here so 0 1 1 so this is our 0 1 1 which is nothing but 3 in octal number system so this represents 3 replace this 3 group word with equivalent decimal number okay or octal representation then 101 is 101 is nothing but 5 and this is 1 110 is your 6 then 010 is 2 this last one if you add this it will become uh, 3 bits so to overall we can say that 26153 is an equivalent octal code Okay, just remember 
from least significant to most significant bit you need to group three binary numbers replace each three binary group three bit binary group with its equivalent octal symbol that's it okay right so similarly we have seen binary to octal now binary to hex let us see how we can do it binary to hexadecimal number system so here the given binary number is something like this 1011 which is our binary you have been asked to generate the equivalent of hex okay so in this particular process again the same procedure as we have done earlier instead of making a three bit binary group here we have to make four bit binary group starting from least significant bit to most significant bit and replace each four bit group with its equivalent hex symbol that's it okay so let us do that so this is my first group starting from ls b 1011 next group is 0110 next group is 1110 and last one is this 10 if you add any number of zeros at the left hand side it will not alter the value so let us so i have written the chart here the different symbols of number systems so 1011 okay so 1011 so this is our binary 1011 its equivalent hex is b 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 where it is 0 1 1 0 is uh, yeah it's here 6 that is 6 then 1100 1 1 0 0 which is nothing but uh, 12 in decimal number its hex representation is C and uh, this is 2 so 2C6B is an equivalent hex number. Okay? The procedure remains the same in this particular case. Okay. So now let us see the reverse process of these two methods what we have discussed. So next conversion is you will be given an octal number and you need to convert it to a binary. Okay. So consider the octal number as 673 and you need to generate an equivalent binary number. Okay. The procedure is very simple here. This is the given number. Write down as it is. Okay. Just replace each of these octal digits with its equivalent 3 bit binary number. That's it. Okay. So here I have already written here. So 3 bit binary code for number 3 is what? Octal number 3 symbol 0 1 1. So 0, 1, 1. 7 is triple 1. 6 is 1, 1, 0. So if you combine all these things, it becomes an equivalent binary number. So it is very simple. Similarly, let us see octal to hex. Octal to 
हेक्स कन्वर्शन सो यू हैव बीन गिवन एन ऑक्टल नंबर थ्री फोर फाइव एंड यू विल बी आस्क टू कन्वर्ट इट टू एन इक्वल एंड हेक्स नंबर ओके so write down the given number okay this is the given number 3 4 5 which is in oct okay then just represent the it's a 3 bit equivalent oct uh, what can say the binary number okay 5 is what 1 not 1 4 is 1 Zero zero, and three is zero one one. Okay, what we have done? We have written the numbers, octal numbers, as it is, and just we have represented its equivalent three-bit binary number. Okay, and then now what you need to do? You start grouping this entire binary number, starting from least significant bit, move towards. most significant bit and in how many numbers you need to group four bits so you need to make four bit group starting from least significant to most significant bit okay so this is my first group this is my second group and remaining is zero okay so if i write that particular thing here for your understanding 0 1 0 1 this is my first group second group is Triple one zero. This is the second group. Last group is zero only. Okay. So now replace each of these particular four bit group with its equivalent hex symbol. Okay. So one not one is nothing but five only. Okay. Next is triple one zero, which is nothing but e. And zero is zero itself. So overall. Zero e five is an equivalent hex number. Okay. So these are the uh, various conversions that we can consider under the data representation, which your uh, computer or CPU uses uh, for the data processing tasks. Okay. Apart from that. this we have uh, different kinds of uh, what you can say the uh, codes that exist in this particular case amongst that the first one is ascii next one is abcdic so these are the standard binary codes which are exclusively used for data representation uh, in our computer system okay so ascii means american standard code for information interchange so just remember these uh, full forms which will be asked in the examination ascii american standard code for information interchange and this particular code is of 7 bit long okay so 7 bit binary codes are used to represent any ascii characters okay so if 7 bits are used means what overall 2 raised to 7 possible code characters are available in this case so 2 raised to 7 means 128 character codes are available codes are possible in this particular case okay similarly the next one more standardized code is abcdic which is nothing but extended 
binary coded decimal interchange code okay extended binary coded decimal interchange code and this particular code is of 8 bits long so if it is 8 bits long means 2 raised to 8 possible code characters are available means total of 256 character codes possible okay so this much is sufficient for the data representation so i hope this particular information is helpful for preparing the data representation aspect of your computer awareness uh, what you can say the questions concerned okay so thank you very much